All right, so let's get started for today. Uh, so last time uh, in this streaming series, we looked at uh, World of Dungeons Turbo Breakers. Um, we looked at all the rules, uh, so I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, but what I do want to do this time is instead look at uh, what various mecha RPGs do to try to represent the genre? Uh, what kind of systems do they rely on fundamentally? Um, and how can we... Um, how can I, I take those and simplify them in a way that makes sense within sort of framework that World of Dungeons Turbo gives us. So the first um, place I'm going to look is rather unsurprising one, Mech Warrior, a uh, classic um, mecha RPG. Uh, it's a companion RPG to the uh, Battletech uh, tabletop war game. Um, one of the first RPGs I actually ever owned. This is the third edition. I had the second edition um, as a kid. But yeah, definitely this was one of the first RPGs I ever owned. Um, and third edition of Mech Warrior was... See, 99, 1999, wow, 19 years old. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's look at some of the game concepts in Mech Warrior to see how the game represents mecha fiction in a role-playing game paradigm. Uh, so, this section describes the core game system of MechWarrior, uh, particularly the way dice are used to determine the success or failure of each character's actions. Additional rules for certain kinds of situations can be found in combat and running the game, but both of those sections build on the concepts presented here. So characters have abilities, um, and they have a Within those abilities, uh, within the category of abilities, we find attributes and skills. Uh, so attributes are strength, body, dexterity, reflexes, intelligence, willpower, charisma, edge, and social standing. Um, these are, so we have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine attributes. Um, that's a lot, uh, for an RPG. Um, I don't think I want that many. I probably want more than three, but I don't want as many as nine. Um, so let's first note these down. I don't know if we'll be using any of them, but I'm going to note them down anyway. So I'm just going to move this over into my other monitor for a moment and start writing these in my scratch pad. Uh, so Mech Warrior Third Edition uh, attributes are strength, body, dexterity, uh, dexterity, haha, uh, reflexes, uh, intelligence. And I wonder, uh, willpower, uh, charisma, edge, and social standing. I wonder how much overlap there is here with Shadowrun. Um, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. It's not really super relevant at the moment, but uh, I will maybe think about that. Um, okay, so skills. Uh, you also get skills. So you have attributes and you have skills. 
Um, these are used to describe what a character can do and how well he or she can do it. Each character has a number of skills and each skill is rated in the form of a skill bonus expressed as a positive modifier such as plus one. The higher the skill bonus, the better the character is at the skill. Um, so for a list of skills, see 57. Detailed descriptions of all the skills start on 95. Uh, so let's just make a note. This is page 13, so we'll go over to page 57. And we'll see how uh, that ends up looking. Okay, here's the list of traits. Our trait skills uh, skill list. Here we are. Uh, so we have. So this is pretty similar to the way that um, Burning Wheel does uh, uh, attributes related to skills, right? Um, but it's more complicated. That's right, there are games more complicated than the Burning Wheel, it's true. Um, okay, so what do we have here? We have a bunch of crap. Um, academics, acrobatics, acting, administration, animal handling, appraisal, archery, artillery, arts, blades, brawling, bombing, bureaucracy, careers, climbing, comms, conventional comms, hyperpulse generator, um, Computers, cryptography, demolitions, disguise, engineering, escape artist, fast talk, first aid, forgery, freefall, gambling, gunnery, ballistics, gunnery laser, gunnery missile, gunsmith, interest, interrogation, intimidation, jump packs, languages, leadership, martial arts, med tech, navigation, negotiation, perception, piloting, pistols, protocol, quick draw, riding, rifles, running, scourge, or scrounge, uh, security system, seduction. It's really interesting how many of these skills are actually in Burning Wheel. Um, sensor operations, shotguns, staffs, stealth, strategy, streetwise, uh, submachine guns, support weapons, surgery, survival, swimming tactics, technician, throwing weapons, tracking, training, whips, zero G operations. Um, Look at this, you can get sub-skills of martial arts. So you can know uh, Aikido, Battle Suit, Kung Fu, uh, Karate, Military, Taekwondo. It's just very overkill. Like, what is, the, what is the mechanical point of listing what particular martial art you know? It feels extremely gratuitous. Um... Anyway, so I don't think we're going to be using a lot of this. Um, this seems way too fine grain for something like Wodu Turbo because all we have is talents, right? We don't have any skills in Wodu Turbo. Um, so probably we want to go over and look at talents instead of looking at skills. Oops. That's a mistake. Here we go. So these are traits. Um, and again, these are these are similar to your trait list in Burning Wheel. Um, so you get uh, things like alternate identity, ambidextrous, attractive, brave, combat sense, commission, contact, custom vehicle, elemental phenotype, exceptional attribute, fast learner, fighter, pilot phenotype, G tolerance, good hearing, good reputation, good vision, gregarious, land grant, mech warrior phenotype, natural aptitude, night vision, owns a vehicle, pain resistance, poison resistance, promotion rank, six sense, title, toughness, vehicle, wealth, well connected, well equipped. Uh, yeah, not super feeling any of this stuff. Like, I mean, again, Burning Wheel does great things with this kind of system, but it's just not very Wodu, not very World of Dungeons. Um, so let's go down to our 
old friend, page 17. Oops. Uh, here we are. Page 15. Oh, 13. Okay. So, you have skills. Uh, there's also traits that are relevant. Okay, sure. Um, action checks. So, this is the way that um, risky stuff is resolved in Mech Warrior. Uh, so you make an action check uh, based on an attribute or a skill. So an attribute check or a skill check. Again, that's very similar to Burning Wheel. Um, to determine whether the action succeeds, the character rolls some dice and follows the procedure described under task resolution. Uh, so there's two different types of dice, uh, 10-sided dice and six-sided dice. Um, okay. Uh, so we use mostly D10s. Every action check is resolved with a roll of two D10s, adding the results on the dice together. So they have exploding or um, open-ended die rolls. Similar to some burning mill rolls. And then we have six-sided dice for damage and rolling on tables. Okay, so task resolution. Sure. Uh, if crit, uh, critical fails, like fumbles, um, there's a target number you try to hit. So what modifiers do they use? Situational modifiers, taking your time. Can increase or lower the target number, similar to burning wheel. Or in Burning Wheel, you don't adjust the target number. You just adjust the die pool. Or rather, you set the target number first, and then you go and set up the die pool. Difficulty modifiers. I mean, I don't feel like any of this stuff is especially mech-oriented. It's very just general RPG crap, you know? Um, Edge is taken from Shadowrun, as far as I know. The die result of any action check that directly affects the character, be it something he's doing or something being done to him, can be altered 
by spending edge to represent a lucky break. This is called pushing your luck. Uh, so pushing your luck temporarily reduces your edge attribute. Um, can increase or decrease the result by two. So you can spend any amount of edge you want. And then there are margins of success to determine how successful your, att or your attempts were. Uh, and... No, oh, and if you spend edge after the dice roll, you get less of a benefit. Okay. Your edge will bounce back whenever you use something selfless or generous. Or doing something or something really bad happens to you. So that again is similar to burning wheel. Or you can spend XP to recover edge. So I mean, again, this isn't very mech-y. I feel like a lot of this stuff is just like generic role-playing game system stuff that doesn't have a lot of sort of intent behind it in um, speaking to the particularities of the genre. It's very just like... you know, task resolution, and Edge is like, well, okay, it kind of helps to establish that this is sort of a pulpy system, but that's kind of all it tells us. So we have character creation. You have an affiliation. Okay, so this is like actually kind of interesting. Um, so you have a character concept, which is like kind of similar to fate, right? Um, uh huh. And then you have an affiliation, which is like interacting with the fiction, right? So this could be like your background in in uh, breakers. and a life path. So this is just like Burning Wheel. It's really interesting to me how many overlaps there are between this game and Burning Wheel because I knew that like, or I suppose that, um, Warhammer Fantasy uh, was a big influence on Burning Wheel, but there is actually a ton of stuff here that is similar to Burning Wheel as well. Um, and I wonder what the shared source of inspiration is there. Because I think this came out before Burning Wheel did. I think Burning Mill was after the year 2000. Um, anyway.
Then you buy equipment. Describe your rank, which is like buying, uh, this is like the resources stuff in Burning Wheel, right? We're not going to have life paths in this game. It's like way too fine grained. Um, so what does the game, like we've gone through all of this stuff so far and like have seen almost nothing to do with Mecha, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is uh, pretty interesting. Um, there's, there's very little reference except for in like a few of the skills that we saw. Affiliations. Again, just like Burning Wheel. I mean, where is, yeah, where's this stuff coming from? This is so interesting. Um, wow. Is it Shadowrun? Like, I don't think it is. I think this is coming from somewhere else. Um, so yeah, you can choose which house you're affiliated with, but this is like, this could be, this could be like any fantasy game, right? So like, I mean, one thing we can note down here is, um, so we'll say like many systems analogous uh, to Burning Wheel, um, there is like a big emphasis on factional affiliation uh, and life and like social standing. Um, also emphasis on pulp fiction tropes by way of edge mechanic. But like, again, none of this has anything to do with Mecha. Um, <laughs> interesting, very interesting. I mean, I could just sit here and read this lore about the Battletech universe for a long time because that is always my shit. Um, Honestly, was seriously debating whether just to play Battletech or not tonight. Um, but time is precious. Got to use it productively. Um, cool. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember this kind of stuff from reading second edition Mech Warrior. And I I remember as a kid like reading um these like detailed sort of like point by dynamics in the game um and being like I don't get it. Like <laughs> it's just like <laughs> totally overwhelmed by character creation in Mech Warrior. And um, I would always just, like, use the defaults that they had. And I remember it was, like, in the middle of the book, they had, like, printed in glossy pages um, in color the, uh, like, suggested default uh, character builds. And that was what I, was all, I would always play with. Um, and, like, my, my experience playing MechWarrior was so primitive it was just like, oh, I think that, you know, these pictures are really cool. And I think Mech Warrior 2 is an awesome game. So I'm going to play Mech Warrior. Um, but then, like, I bought the Battletech game to, like, have it as part of, like, you know, the set that was supposed to go with Mech Warrior, the RPG. Uh, but, like, I would just, like, take my unpainted mecha miniatures that came with a Battletech box set and like fold out the the hex map that they that came with it and just like put them on the hex map and then like look at them and that was about the extent of my experience actually 
um, playing Battletech. <laughs> it wasn't until uh, Mech Commander came out that I'd played like anything remotely resembling Battletech. Um, yeah, wow. Takes me back, takes me back. Um, so... Does this have? Yeah, this has this has leads, right? This is like leads into the, these things here. I mean, it's just so much like Burning Wheel. Um, really interesting. And I wonder, like, how much of this comes out of like Traveler? Um, anyway. Uh, occupational fields. So this is like actually getting into some of the interface between the social fiction of the Battletech universe, the character build, and the the mecha premise, right? Because a lot of these life paths are going to segue into being a mech warrior. Um, you know... Like you're an elemental, you're a mech warrior, um, et cetera, et cetera. So here we have the attribute descriptions. I really wonder why they implemented both dexterity and reflexes. That feels like very um, weird. Also super interesting that your attributes are determined by your, uh, your social standing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, again, very similar to Burning Wheel. Okay, well, um, uh, so we're just gonna we're we're just gonna like assume that everybody in our, in this game owns a mech or like has access to a mech. It is, you know, not a question. But in in Mech Warrior, it's possible to create a character that is not actually a mech warrior. Um, so like some some characters don't actually own mecha uh, in this game, which again it makes me feel like Mech Warrior is more of like a simulator of the BattleTech universe than it is a mecha RPG. <laughs> You know, like it feels like the mecha part is almost like offloaded to Battletech. And this is just like, let's explore the cool lore. Um, so let's keep going here. I'm super interested though to actually take old Mech Warrior modules and try to run them with the game I'm making right now. Like I want I so want to do that. I want to see how that works. Um, so these are your traits. Um, okay. Okay. 
And I wonder how does it do wealth in this game? I'm just curious. Oh. Okay, so you can you can spend uh, points at character creation to get a certain amount of sea bills to start with. Um, but I think that probably um, in this game, I'm probably going to do something like either the resources stat in Burning Wheel or the license stat in uh, Lancer, which we'll, we'll talk about when we get to Lancer. Okay, so what is this? Here we actually get some mechs. These are tables. So you roll, you roll 2d6 to see what so it's dependent on your faction, and then you roll 2d6, determined, like within the weight class, determined, to determine which mech you end up with. That's pretty interesting. No, I got the commando. No! <laughs> Man, it's wild. I love looking at old games like this. It's so interesting. Um, okay, so skill types. This game is our skill descriptions. Again, it's pretty much like looking through the middle of Burning Wheel. <laughs> you can see here that the different martial arts have different abilities associated with them. I don't know, whatever. So like, what does the tactic skill actually do? Um, pretty interesting. They add their skill bonus to their initiative total, provided the combat situation is appropriate to their tactics knowledge. Huh. Combat. So, in the war-torn Battletech universe, combat is a constant fact of life. Sooner or later, as much as they might try to avoid it, mech warrior characters will inevitably get into a situation that words won't get them out of. Then the guns start blazing and all bets are off. Since the lives of the characters are on the line during combat, and sometimes the success or failure of a mission can hinge on a fight's outcome, additional rules are necessary to help the player and game master determine what happens in these tense and fast-paced situations. Sure. Um, yeah, hmm, okay. So there's, there's combat rules on top of the other rules. Uh, the following rules expand on the game concepts chapter to provide an easy to play but fairly realistic personal combat system that should be able to handle most of the situations that will arise in gameplay. Um, the game master should feel free to expand on or cut from these rules to cover unforeseen circumstances or make these rules fit better into his own campaign. However, make sure the players are aware of any changes made to the published rules. Like, so you can house rules this. Like, this is just a suggestion. Okay, well. Um. <laughs> and then, uh. There's a little note to excuse the fact that it is not the most realistic system ever conceived, right? Um, fast fun was the main design goal of the MechWarrior 3 combat system. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Five second rounds or five second actions. Incidental, simple, and complex actions. Initiative. Large scale combat. Movement. is pretty similar to movement and burning wheel this is like very like fast and loose kind of system within the context of trad games at least uh, there's some modifiers based on the situation. So this is, well, maybe relevant to what we're doing. Melee combat. Yeah, I mean, seems okay, not super interesting. Like, there's a lot of rules here over combat. Okay, so here we go. Vehicular combat. Um, the battlefields of the 31st century are dominated by battle max, tanks, and other vehicles of war. The complexities of vehicle combat are beyond the scope of this book, but fortunately FASA produces a vehicular combat game set in the same universe as Mech Warrior, Battletech. Uh, the following rules explain how to use your Mech Warrior 3 characters in the Battletech game to resolve vehicular engagements. Use the Battletech Master Rules to resolve combat except as specifically noted below. The sections are organized and named to correspond directly with the matching sections in BMR. Uh, it's also possible to use these rules along with the Battletech 4th Edition box set, although there will be a few cases where terminology might be slightly different. It shouldn't affect gameplay. So there's a skills conversion table.
Player characters take damage according to the Mech Warrior 3 rules. Pretty complicated. The damage from Battletech weapons is converted to Mech Order 3 terms by multiplying the Battletech damage value by 3d6. Wow. <laughs> a clan extended range medium laser inflicts 7 damage, so against a Mech Warrior character it would inflict 21d6 damage with AP7. Uh, okay. Only have to roll a 21 die die pool. It's a little much. Okay, so that's kind of how it is. Like, it's. This is really not a mech game, is what I think we can take away from Mech Warrior. Is is not a game about mechs. It's a game about everything except mechs. Um, it, the mech stuff is just, you know, referenced, um, but not really essential to what is happening in the game. As far as I can tell, at least. So here we have the, the lore of the world. Oh, this is the running the part, running the game part. It might be worth taking a look at. Uh... So what kind of characters do we have? Adventurers, clan, covert operatives, explorers, free traders, freedom fighters, media, mercenaries, pirates and bandits, regular military and it gives you some like plot hooks for how to play these different types hmm okay well that's it so yeah so this is basically like what we can conclude from looking through the whole book here is that uh, Mech Warrior is not a game about mechs. <laughs> Only references mech play actually about the uh, battle tech lore and exploring it.
Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, well, we did it. We looked through Mech Warrior. That's done. We looked through the Granddaddy, um, and we determined that it's really kind of tangential to our purposes and probably won't look at it anymore. Uh, okay, so next, I want to take a look at Stars Without Number. Um, So Stars Without Number is a indie game that is like based on Traveler. Um, and mechs are sort of like a an, an expansion on the game. They're not at the core of the game. Uh, the, these are only included in the deluxe edition. So if you want to check out the mecha rules um, for Stars Without Number, then you have to buy the deluxe edition. Um, it's not included in the free edition. So, um, they give a lot of sort of like lore information for why um, mecha are not really common, um, but we're not really interested in that. Uh, instead, we're interested in sort of the mechanics. Um, so let's let's first write this down. Uh, so we're talking about stars without number. Of number revised edition. Um, so what we have are three types of mechs. So mecha types. Uh, we have shock. Um, I think it's Specialist, yeah, and Cymac, and Cymac, because Psionics is a big deal in Stars Without Number. Um, probably not going to be a thing I explore here. So, Shock Mechs are Assault Mechs, um, and... Specialist halls were, so I can actually just like copy paste this into my document because this actually has OCR. Specialist mechs. Specialist hulls were optimized for particular battlefield, battlefield duties, especially defensive measures and high mobility recon. Cymac hulls uh, intended to amplify the abilities of a psychic pilot for battlefield use. That's really no surprise. Okay. So there's three types of mecha in Stars Without Number. What other interesting things can we see here? Uh, there are hall sizes, um, suits. This is not very well organized, I have to say. There's a lot of like stuff buried in text. Suits, light mechs, and heavy mechs are the different classes. Um, mecha sizes. 
So suits, light, max, heavy, max. Okay. Then there's lore about why the stuff was not common. Okay. Next we're going to talk about mech combat. So uh, mechs have armor ratings like vehicles. Um, there are certain types of weapons they're immune to. So, okay, so combat. Uh, one point is armor. Excuse me. So armor, um, you know, subtracts damage. But additionally, um, depending on mech size class, can ignore damage altogether. Uh, size class and weapon type. So that may be a thing we care about. I don't know. Um, okay. Um, the mech can target different uh, targets per turn, uh, but they have to declare their targets before rolling. Um, if, if you destroy an enemy with an attack and then your other weapons are targeted on that enemy, they're considered to be wasted. So there's a little bit of like strategizing you do with that. Uh, and suit pilots can choose to fire sidearms or their mecha weapons, but they can't do both in the same round. So um, we'll talk about this a little bit, maybe. Uh, so targeting. I th um, so you can target, uh, multi-targeting uh, is always possible, but must be done before rolling. Um, uh, multiple uh, uh, overkill is wasted. Uh, retargeting not possible. Some strategy involved. Um, and finally, uh, oh yeah, uh, firing personal weapons weapons in the same round is not possible. Okay. Now uh, the next thing to talk about oh speed. Um, so speed is a thing, uh, speed's determined by, um, suit speed and size. So the suits have speed rating. Speed 
speed rating, uh, which is multiplied by a value determined. Uh, yeah, it should be mecha. Right, okay. So mecha have a speed rating. Just multiply by value determined by their size. Um, most mecha have, so okay, so you can, um, you make a wisdom check um, after after a fight to determine if you wasted ammo. to determine if out of ammo uh, difficulty increases after every fight without resupply. That's an interesting thing. Um, so maybe like, maybe use a clock for this. Um, then there's this ECM stuff, not really interesting to, I mean, that, that is just purely in this game in order to, uh, justify the existence of Mecha at all, so, eh. Okay, so, abilities, um... Abilities. So, PC abilities... So this is a uh, uh, mechs are treated as extensions of the wearer for the purpose of special abilities. Very interesting, very to the point, which is good. Um, Okay. Uh, mech damage and repair. So pilots don't take damage until mech are destroyed. So for suit class mecha, 
the PC can choose uh, to lose hit points instead of the suit. Uh, but otherwise, basically, the suit takes damage until the uh, PC... Uh, or until it's destroyed, and then the PC takes damage. And there's a physical save... Um, when a mech is destroyed to see if they are mortally wounded and then there's repair rules okay so this is all pretty relevant stuff um, so let's get back to that um, Okay, so uh, no, 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 we're talking about damage and repair. Okay, damage. Um, so mechs soak damage uh, before PCs. Um, except suit sized mecha where PCs can uh, choose to take the hit out of their HP pool instead. Um, which sounds very deadly. Um, I think that is after armor, re armor reduction, though. to so mechs are fully functional until their last hit points are destroyed uh, so there's um, uh, functionality is all or nothing no reduced uh, functionality until HP zero When a mech is destroyed, uh, destroyed, and a PC is inside, they must uh, save or be mortally wounded. So there's a repair cost per HP. Uh, repair cost per HP lost or regained uh, determined by uh, mech size. And then there's like environmental rules. Ooh. 
rules for uh, dealing with hostile environments. Not super interesting. Okay. maintenance rules. Mechs can operate up to 24 hours before maintenance is required. Uh, for each further two hours of operation, a cumulative minus one penalty is applied to all hit rolls and skill checks of the mech. Uh, when the penalty hits minus 10, the mech shuts down. Park mechs don't count as being in active use. Um, okay, so this is all important. And then this is a uh, In one hour, a single tech can maintain a number of heavy mechs equal to their fixed rating plus one. Hmm. Piloting mechs. Mech control systems rely on contact-free neural scanning and imaging technology combined with induced somatic feedback projectors. Blah, blah, blah. Few hours of basic training will allow anyone to operate a mech, although elaborate maneuvers may be impossible for those with at least uh, pilot zero skill. Most somatic controls are sufficiently flexible to handle human, alien, VI, or true AI pilots. Um, there's a length of time required to interface with a Mac, um, getting into a Mac. Mechs can carry stuff. And then they give you a bunch of stuff to include. So we're definitely gonna reference, we're definitely gonna reference the mech fittings for determining what kind of equipment we might have in the game. So let's make a note of that. So we'll just scan through this for the moment. Mech weaponry.
So a lot of this stuff is just like descriptions. So I think we can definitely improve on this kind of stuff. This is just like damage values. Um, armor piercing values. Tags. Okay. So weapons. Um, Fired with piloting skill, uh, they have uh, damage values, uh, AP values, uh, cla uh, mecha class restrictions, and uh, tags. Okay, cool. Well, um, I think that was a rather, uh, you know, low key stream. Um, and certainly because of the time that I was streaming, it was very uh, uh, lightly attended. Uh, however, um, we did get through Stars Without Number. Uh, we'll be revisiting that when it comes to designing equipment. Uh, but uh, we, we did get to note down its major ways that it does things and um, it actually does have mecha rules unlike mech warrior <laughs> uh, so that's that's interesting that's good uh, so next time um, we're gonna we're gonna head on over to take a look at lancer um, which to my mind is one of the most sophisticated mecha RPGs out there. And I'll think about um, whether there's other ones that are really worth checking out. Um, maybe uh, mecha versus kaiju. Um, that's much more of like a super robot thing, but there could be something in there worth checking out. Um, Aside from that, I'm not really too sure. Uh, yeah, so maybe Lancer and Mecha versus Kaiju, and we'll call it good as far as Mecha games go there for reference material. Um, but definitely we're going to get into Lancer next time. Uh, so I will uh, see you then.